Well, good evening. I mean, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming tonight. We uh, <coughs> we finished our eating together. And I want you to realize, uh, in the time when Jesus was with his disciples, they would have eaten together as well. And part of that meal was the Passover meal. And uh, that's when Jesus, after eating the Passover meal together, remembering uh, what Passover was, it was when all of the Israelites were in Egypt in slavery for 400 years, which, which God told them they would be there for 400 years. And so there is slavery is 400 years. Moses comes in and, and the last plague is, a, is the plague of death where the death angel would come over and all of the firstborn would die. And then from that, um, uh, the Pharaoh's son dies. He, he says, just go on, just get out of here. And they, they ate and drank a Passover meal that night. Everyone who's... Uh, uh, the, the blood's lamb was over the door and eating the Lord's, the, the, the Passover meal. They were saved. And so from that they received what's, what we do as, as Passover. And so what's interesting about Passover is that <clears throat> during Passover, uh, during the, the first Passover, the death angel Passover, he passed over all of the house of the Israelites and killed all of the firstborn sons in every house. And then what did God do? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and so the only way God can pass His wrath pass over us is that He took the wrath out on His own Son, and so the only Son of God died for our sins. And so, this is just a replica, just an idea of what it might have looked like, uh, and based on the scriptures of the uh, of the twelve disciples um, meeting and doing Passover meal, and Jesus declaring to him to them what He would do for their sin. While he was triumphal entry into Jerusalem to the cheering reception of the common people, the past Sunday, Palm Sunday, this past Sunday that we've celebrated, Jesus' conflict with the Jewish leaders has come into sharp focus during the week. On Thursday, Jesus and his disciples gathered together to celebrate the Passover meal. They have journeyed from Bethany where they typically spent the night this week, just outside of Jerusalem, to where they are being served their Passover meal. It's in a large room within the city walls, big enough for what would have been their last supper together. It would have been customary for the person who provided the space and the meal to also have provided servants for the customary foot washing that would accompany an evening meal. But Jesus had other plans, teaching plans, for what he knew was going to be their final evening together. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not realize what I'm doing now, but later you will understand. No, you shall never wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Those who have taken a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you.
call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I set an example for you to do to others as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, the servant is not greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Ask him which one he means. Well, who is it? It's the one to whom I give this piece of bread to when I dipped it in the dish. about to do, friend. Do it quickly. Take and eat. This is my body. drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I will not drink from this fruit of the vine again until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For my Father's house has many rooms. If this were not so, would I tell you that I'm going to go prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll bring you back to me so that you can be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Lord, we don't know the way that you're going. How do we know the way? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father. And now, you do know him, and you have seen him. Lord, just show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Philip, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you for so long? If you've seen me, you've seen my Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that the Father is in me and I'm in the Father? The words I speak are not my own but the Father in me who is doing his works. Believe me when I say that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. Or at least believe the evidence of the works themselves. Whoever believes in me will do as I have done, and even greater things than this, because I am going to the Father. 
and I will do whatever you ask in my name, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. Jesus would continue teaching his disciples until after night had fallen, marking the end of the Jewish day and the beginning of the next day, Friday. Then they would say a prayer to conclude their Passover meal, and together they would depart for the Garden of Gethsemane outside of the city walls, where Jesus would be betrayed, arrested, and face his trials before religious and political leaders. The crowd that heralded him as king on Sunday would soon scream for his crucifixion and trade him for a murderer. But that was always his plan to give his life a ransom for many and make it possible for sinful people to restore relationship with God by professing Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Amen. kind of hard. Is this on? Yeah. It's kind of hard to even watch, isn't it? It's hard to watch and imagine what it would have been like as we even practiced this yesterday. It was hard to imagine what it would have been like <clears throat> for someone like Simon who, who wanted to be a servant to Jesus. And he's like, you can't wash my feet. And for Jesus to look at him and say, you don't understand what I'm doing is symbolic that if you want to have a part in the ministry, you've got to let me do my job. And then for for Thomas to Thomas and, and really for all of them to be asking the question, am I the one that's going to betray you? I mean, they probably thought back of all the things that they had done wrong. And in my life, am I betraying you? And I don't know about you, but in my life, that's the way I think all the time. I mean, we had a hard time imagining who would play Judas. And I, I jokingly said, Chris, and Chris said, I'll do it. But nobody wants to play Judas's part, right? Who wants to be the betrayer? And yet we forget that Right behind Judas came Simon Peter, who just after this moment said to, the, t- said to Jesus, if everyone else, follow, uh, everyone else leaves, I'll never betray you. I'll never deny you. And Jesus looked at him and said, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. And in our life, we somehow deny, I'm going to switch mics because this mic is already irritating me. Try the blue one. This one on? Good. <clears throat> If every time we denied Jesus in the way we acted, we would all go to hell. I'm thankful for this presentation of what we see in the Scriptures because what we see is, is, is a God who became flesh and lived among us and for three years walked with people who were failures. And if God can change the world with 12, actually 11 failures, then what can he do with a church full of people who, who are failures but who are willing and ready to repent? And as we do the Lord's Supper, that's really what we're about to participate in. We're participating in exactly what Jesus did when he, told, when he told his disciples, if you want to have a part in what I'm doing, then you've got to let me play my part. And here's our part. We're supposed to remember what he did. Paul says, as often as you do this, you're remembering the Lord, and you're supposed to do it until Jesus returns. And so tonight, we're going to take of the Lord's Supper. We're going to give you about five minutes. This is Why? Unlike the disciples, the disciples did not understand what Judas was doing. Did you, did you notice Judas got up and he, he, they called him the betrayer and Judas stood there like, I don't know if I want to do this. And Jesus said, go do quickly what you're going to do. And all of the disciples did not understand what he was going to do. They thought maybe he was doing some task for Jesus, but he was betraying Jesus. They didn't have any idea what, what was good. they were all going to flee from the Lord. They didn't know any of that. And yet, God loved him enough to die for him. But you and I know that Jesus died for our sins. We know that we're not supposed to live in sin because of what God's done on the cross. And so we should repent from the things that are not right. And so we're going to give you five minutes with your family to just walk through in your own life your own sin. The Bible says in in 1 John 1, 9 that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Let me just say this to you, though. In Madagascar, <clears throat> since Radu's here, I like using Madagascar stuff for him. In Madagascar, we, we would go to villages, and I would say, if, if your son got in trouble, would I bail him out? And they would say, well, no, you're not his father. I said, that's right, I have no relationship. I said, but if your son got in trouble, then would you, get it, would you work with him? Well, of course, 
because you're the Father. See, in order for God to do something in your life, to forgive your sins, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, you must be in a relationship with God. You can't just cry out to him and expect, oh, now he's going to save me because I deserve it, because you don't. But the Bible says if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that salvation comes by faith in Christ alone. And so if you have a relationship with Jesus, you can ask him to forgive you, and you will be forgiven. But if you have no relationship with God, if, if Christ is not yet your Lord, then you cannot ask him to forgive your sins because he's not yet your master. And so today, if you've not given your, your life to Christ, you don't need a church or a pastor or any of that to, to, for you to do that. You just simply have to tell Jesus, from now on, you can be master of my life. You are the Lord. And the Bible says he will save your life. So we're going to take about five minutes just to walk through your own life. Because here's what the Bible says. It says, when people take, the, take of the Lord's Supper improperly, some have gotten sick and others have died. Actually, it says fallen asleep. The whole idea is, is that when, when you eat and drink of the body and the blood of Christ, it's not the actual body, not the actual blood, but in eating it and drinking it, you're symbolizing the fact of what Jesus did on the cross. And if you eat it without thinking through your sin, without confessing your sin, then you eat judgment into your life. But if you confess your sins, then what you eat is his mercy into your life. And so make sure you spend about five minutes and just spend time with the Lord. If your children don't yet, aren't yet into, in a relationship with Jesus, please do not let them take of the Lord's Supper tonight. If you're not yet in a relationship with Jesus, please don't take it just to fit in tonight. And if you've got something against someone that's not in this room and you've not made that right, don't take of the Lord's Supper tonight. Make sure that you are right with the Lord and right with each other before we take of the Lord's Supper tonight. Let me pray for us and we'll, uh, we'll spend some time with families for five minutes. Father, thank you for your word. Father, thank you for this presentation that these men gave. Lord, I'm thankful that, uh, Father, even from the back, I thought, I can't, I can't hear all the words, and I thought of all the things we need to do better next year so we can understand every word, but the truth is, the disciples that were up here understood almost none of the words. They didn't know what you were going to do. They didn't understand it, and yet you still did it. Father, I pray tonight that your spirit draws men and women to yourself. Father, draw us to you, that we might understand who you are. Father, your spirit might call us into a relationship with Jesus as our Lord. And Father, now help us to deal with our sin. Help us as fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters to really approach your throne humbly, seeking your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Take five minutes, and then we'll, uh, we'll start the Lord's Supper.
Okay. So you'll find at your table, or you should have at your table, um, some juice, some crackers. If you do not have the juice and the crackers at your table, and you are participating in the Lord's Supper, I need you to raise your hands. So we'll have to get some to you. So this table needs some. I know we have some extras somewhere. Anybody else not have enough crackers and juice? Let me just say this again because I, shh, listen up. Everybody listen, please, listen up. I want to say this again because I, I feel like some people missed out on an opportunity. This is probably one of the holiest things we do at church. The reason we don't do this on Sundays is because I don't want people taking of the Lord's Supper who don't understand it. And so there's some more tables over here, Dr. JK. Um, and so I, I saw people walking around getting food. That's okay that you did, but here's the thing. If you're not prepared, if you're not right with the Lord, please do not take the Lord's Supper tonight. It is a, it's really a big deal. Um, and if your kids, if you don't know for a fact that your children are in a relationship with Jesus, please do not let them take this. It, it, it defeats the whole thing we do. Okay? All right, anybody else uh, elements? Anybody else not have any? And I need, I need some as well. If somebody can come bring me one of each, that would be great. Huh? Oh, well, there's some matzo bread up here. Yeah, it's true. Thank you, ma'am. I got it. Thank you. So just like the Bible said, as we saw depicted here, does everybody, has everybody got it? All right, if everybody could, could make sure that your table is not talking, that'd be great. So Jesus said, as often as you do this, remember me. And so the Bible says he gave, he gave them the bread. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. I mean, I want to make sure you catch that. If Jesus had not died on a cross, you could not be forgiven. There would be no forgiveness. We would have nothing to look forward to except the wrath of God. And so Jesus' body was broken for us. And so I want you to take that and just break it. And realize that that's what happens when you sin. You break relationship. You break, I'm sorry, you break fellowship. But I love this. Look, I, I, here, help me out. I dropped mine all the way down to the floor. Somebody grab that for me. So look, I broke fellowship. But here's the thing. God doesn't leave me. Because if I'm in a relationship with him, even though fellowship might be broken, when I gave him my life, I became in a relationship with my father. And so although he, his body was broken for my sin. He, he did that in order to, to put me back together so that we could be back with the Father. So as we eat this, Father, we thank you for your body that was broken for our behalf. God, we thank you for your body. In Jesus' name, amen. The body of Christ. In the same way he took the cup. And he told them this is, now this was different now. During the Passover they would take the cup and, and they would remember and wait for the, the coming of Elijah. But the Bible says that Jesus said that I'll no longer drink with you until the day you're with me again in heaven. And so when we drink of this, the Bible says that Jesus declared this to be his blood. That was shed for you. The Bible says in the Old Testament, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. And so God had to shed his own blood. Let me make sure you understand that. A covenant is the same as the word testament. And so in the Old Testament, God created a testament, a will and testament. What he's gonna happen, what's going to happen when God dies is you get his stuff. But how does God die? The Bible says that God became flesh. The word became flesh. John chapter four, uh, 1, verse 14. The Word became flesh and lived among us. So God became flesh. Why? So that He could die on a cross. So that in dying, His blood would be shed, and therefore we could inherit the kingdom of God. 
And so this is the blood, the, the remembrance of the blood of Christ that was shed for us so that you and I could be inheritors of the kingdom of God, so that eternal life could be waiting with the Father and not apart from Him. So Jesus, we thank you for the blood that you shed that brings about the remission of our sin. In Jesus' name, amen. The blood of Christ. Here's what you need to catch. What you just did did not make you saved and didn't make you more saved. But what it, what it did is it made us obedient. Because as we do it, what do we do? it In remembrance of Him. So the other thing we're going to do tonight is now I'm going to ask all those who are going to be baptized to go ahead and make your way back to the baptistry. If you want to watch from out there, actually if you're family, and I know we're all family, calm down. If you are immediate family, and or like close, close friends, and you want to go watch out there, you can, but it will be very packed. There's a lot of people. We'll also have it on the screen up here. But if you're being baptized enough, you'll go ahead and make your way that way. Baptism is the other thing that we do until Jesus returns. Why? Because the Bible says, in your going, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all things I've commanded. And lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. And so we take the Lord's Supper till he returns, And we baptize until he returns because baptism also, everybody listen, baptism also does not save you. And it doesn't make you more saved. What it does is it it tells everybody else that you are saved. Because what has to happen for you to go to heaven is you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, does that mean I'm going to speak in some tongue? Well, that's all depending upon God, not upon you. But what it does mean is you'll be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most parts of the world. He is going to fill you with his spirit. When you give your life to him, because he's going to wash you clean on the inside. Washing you with the water through the word. And so that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. From that then, since he's washed us on the inside, we want the world to know it, so we baptized on the outside. So in the same way that Jesus was put in the grave and came out, in the same way we're put under the water to remind us that one day we're going to die and our Father's going to come get us. And we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And so that's what this symbolic act is. And so I'm going to go back there and we will uh, take care of baptisms. You stay seated and be praying for those who are being baptized tonight. This working? Test one, two, two, one, two. All right, is it working now? Test one, two. Yeah, turn me high. Yeah. All right. Is that what you want? Do I have to... All right, so we're going to start tonight with Matthew Harry's. Matthew, where are you? Well, he's still getting changed. We're just okay. Matthew's coming. If yeah, come on, Matt. It's one of the most exciting things we do is to baptize people. Here's why. Baptizing doesn't make Matthew cleaner. (laughs) In fact, it's just going to make the water dirtier. You're You're welcome. (laughs) But it is a symbol of what has already occurred on the inside. And so, um, like we do every time, is there anything you want to say about your your walk with the Lord, how you gave your life to Christ? Do you want to say anything? Okay, he said no. All right. That makes this pretty easy. Mom and dad are here. Now, are, are mom and dad baptized believers? Do you want to come baptize your son? Look, let me say one of the things we believe in every day. We believe it is not a ba- it's not a pastor's job to baptize people. It's a pastor's job to teach people to do as the Bible declares. And so, 
whether, whether you like it or not, you are his discipler. You have been and you always will be. And so I invite you, as he's declared this, I invite you to come and baptize. Mom, you can go on the other side and you can baptize from that side and do this together. And so Matt, let me invite you. You probably don't take your shoes off, my man. Yeah. I love baptist time, ba- baptism time because I feel like we're on the job training. You can have a seat. <laughs> no, but you can leave him down a little further, a little longer. All right. So Matt did, uh, yeah, don't touch the sides. You've got to trust your daddy and mama. They might hold you down, but it's okay. I'm just doing this so I don't. Amen, oh. amen. So listen, so if you confess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, yes, trusting him alone for your salvation, then it is our privilege to baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you're buried with him in baptism. Go ahead. Raised to walk new in Christ. Amen. Bless you, man. All right, Brooke Bush. Come on, Brooke. Just just slide past Matt. He's Des is always in the way. She's always so excited. Who is your mentor? Um, well, Lori is. Lori, come on, baby. And Miss who 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 else? Oh, sister in law. Come on. Lori, you're on this side, baby. So hold on, no, you can't get in yet. <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have, yes. Trusting him alone for your salvation? Yes. All right, now you can get in. <laughs> well, it was, it was cold, then Matt got in, it warmed up really fast. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we washed all of hell out of him, so it's... Cool now. So based, so based on now look, it's on the job training. So everything has to be under the water. We're not gonna bury her with a hand up, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, Jesus would be like, "Do you have a question?" We don't want to do that. So based on your confession, it's my privilege, our privilege, to baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you're buried with Him. Oh, you gotta, you gotta let go of the sides. Oh you gotta <laughs> trust the Lord. I got you. You're buried with him in baptism. Raised to walk new in Christ. It's amazing to me. These are the people that you know are going to be a problem in the church because their feet just want to keep coming out of the water. He's got to keep burying them down. Keep burying them down. All right, Kevin. Where's Kevin? Come on, Kevin. Kevin Bryan. Where's Dave? Come on, Dave. Who else is going to help here? All right, Kevin and James. Here we go. So David and James. Just in case you're wondering who is it doing all the baptisms, look, one of the things, one of the things we believe at every day is that we are more than a church. We are a family. And so one of the things we do on Tuesday nights, on Wednesday nights, we have what's called 222, which is mentoring. And so when people give their lives to Christ, we put them under the mentorship of someone who is not, not like they're a better Christian. They just are a little further along, like maybe one week along further than everybody else. And so they, uh, that's Pastor David, obviously, and, and James, uh, really mentoring and helping Kevin. So they're, we're expecting them to, to be in the life of Kevin and help him walk in his walk with Jesus. So Kevin... Have you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. You're trusting him alone for salvation? Yes. Amen. You want to say anything? No. No. <laughs> Let me tell you what's great. Your being baptized says all that, that needs to be said. So, come on, into the water. <laughs> all right. This is good mentorship. James just asked him, how long can you hold your breath? This is good. Kevin, listen, it's our privilege. Based on your confession, it's our privilege to baptize you, our brother, 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you're buried with him in baptism. Yeah. Raised to walk new in Christ. Now look, since I embarrassed the last person, let me, let me speak on Kevin for a moment. Uh, Kevin learned from the last person's mistake, and he wedged his legs at the bottom so that they wouldn't come up. And listen. Oh, there, oh there, there you go. Well, he learned from her. And so here's the deal. Sometimes you got to wedge, you got to get your feeding right, your foot right, and wedge yourself into God's Word so that nothing will come up out of, the, out, of, out of the sin. Amen? So wedge yourself in the Word, man. Good, that was good, Kevin. Way to preach, buddy. All right. Matthew Mendez. Come on, boy. Now, has, Daddy, has Dad been baptized? Come on, and let's go then. Look, the only question I ever ask is this. Not have you been baptized, but have you surrendered your life to Christ and been baptized since? Yes? Okay. Mom, you too? Okay. All right, Matt, come on. It's your turn, buddy. Wait, wait. You can't get in yet. He's not ready yet. Just wait a minute. Calm down. Matthew, have you, uh, have you prayed to receive Christ as your Lord? Yes. What was that? Yes. Okay. Are you trusting him alone for salvation? Yes. Okay. You sure? Your shoes are still on. Okay. You gonna leave your socks on? Yes, okay. Go on and get in the water, bud. Listen, I love when mom and dad get to baptize their children. Because two things are true, especially in this case, because you're not baptizing him as a child, which is your decision. He's made this choice. Now, this is your choice, not theirs, right? You remember that later. But mom and dad, what it means is, is that he's made his own decision, but he made that decision not separate from you. If it weren't for some things he's seen and, and, and taught by you and from you, he wouldn't be here today. And so thank you for being faithful parents. So, all right, you know, come on, let's go. I love the fact he's going, how did he wedge it in there again? <laughs> so listen, ba Matthew, based on your confession of faith, it's our privilege to baptize you, our brother. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you're buried with him in baptism. Raised to walk new in Christ. Go oh, that way. Man. Destiny. Where is Destiny? Not Chris. I didn't say Chris. Destiny. Huh? Thomas. They not here? Destiny Thomas not here? Okay. Uh, Tracy Salazar. Tracy and Anthony. Anthony, come on. Look, we always, look, unlike, unlike the world, you get to stand on this side. Unlike the world, men have to come first. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. This is important. If you go first in here, then maybe you'll put her first in the world. Right? But if you let her go first here, then you'll, she'll think she's your leader. You're the spiritual head of your house. That doesn't mean you get to tell her what to do. What it means is you got to treat her like Jesus treats you, which means even when she fails, you still love her. And even, you know what I mean? Just so, so you got to put up with that. But... Anthony, have you prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I have. And you're trusting him alone for your salvation? Yes. Who's your mentor? David. David, come back up here. And uh, do you, okay, that's fine. Go on, get, Stephen, where you at? Stephen. Yeah, Stephen will be here in just a moment. I'm sure he's running from the back. I'm sure he is. Come on, Flintstone. Do the Flintstone run. Stephen Gomez will come and help. You can go ahead and enter the water, Anthony. I forgot to ask you. Do you want to say anything? No, sir. I knew it. <laughs> Don't ever ask me if I want to say something, because I will. <laughs> Calm down. All right. Anthony, listen. It is our privilege to baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I love that you already have your feet wedged. <laughs> so you are buried with him in baptism and raised to walk new in Christ.
Now, this is the crazy cool part. This is my favorite part of baptisms. I just told you the definition of a leader is you got to be one step ahead of whoever you're leading. Husband is now one step ahead. So I'm going to invite you to come over here, and you're going to baptize your own wife. Because you just have to be one step ahead. Come on. Now, let, let me ask you a question now. Hold on. Are you holding anything against him before he baptizes you? No. Okay. Because we, we could give you a minute. Okay. I'm just checking. So, have, have you prayed to receive Christ Jesus as your Lord? Yes. Trusting him alone for your salvation? Yes. All right. Tell us your testimony. No. I just want to see if I could get that over on somebody. It's not going to work. You can come on. She was like, No. You know, it's funny, if I'd have pushed her, she'd have done it. I couldn't have pushed Anthony. I could see that coming. I know, but you would have done it. I know you would have. All right, so based on your confession, I, I wait, I'm waiting to look at him. Based on your confession, I, we baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you're buried with him in baptism. Raised to walk new in Christ. Is the Thomas family not here? I just want to make sure one more time before we move on. All right, Miss Lay, you are up. Now, look, this is my favorite one of the whole night. Let me tell you why. If anyone has an excuse why they cannot be baptized, it would be this lady. Miss Jackie, obviously, is in a wheelchair. Not, you know, can't, can't really do a lot of walking. And her, here's what she said. I want to be baptized. I just don't know how you're going to do it. I said, we will figure it out. And so uh, I think we've got dudes that are big enough in the church to handle this. So, so if you'll get, each of you get on one side, and then we'll move, we'll move this out of the way. Well, let, let, them, let them grab your under, under, your arm, under the arm. Don't pull. Let her push. There you go. That's all right. They got you. It's slippery. Well, you just hold her. We'll be good. Here, get on this mat. This mat's not slippery. Head for the mat. Okay. Now, see if you can put a leg over it. And you don't think you can. We're going to figure it out. Um, come on. Sit on the edge. Sit. Leo, come and help. Yeah, sit on the edge. And, wait, wait, wait. Sit on the edge and see if you can put one leg in. Let's do it that way. But let's just, let's just, walk. yeah, here we go. Just put one, just sit right here and then you can put one, one leg in. And we're just going to take our time. Yeah, you, you don't let her fall in. If she does fall in, though, we'll just count it. We'll count it. It'll make a good YouTube. It will. She, she's going to, I think she's going to twist around now. Hey, they can do it. Trust me, Jackie. They can do it. I promise you. I was like, Kayla, what you going to do? You get up out of here. Know that we love you and we got you, Miss Jackie. Yeah. We ready? Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. See yeah. there? Yeah. That's nice and easy. Nice and easy. It's good and hot, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, the good news is she's in. So, Miss Jackie, you, you might want to, let's let you switch sides so you can, you can get this smiling face over here. here. Jimmy, pop up out the way so we can see. Pick the cord over, Radu. Radu, the cord. There we go. I don't care, but listen, we want to get this on camera. Miss Jackie, have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Have you trusted him alone for your salvation? Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, here's the good news. This doesn't save you. But what this does is it reminds you that one day you'll be with the Lord. Yeah. And your husband. And so this is a great reminder of those things. So, oh, girl, don't do that. So with that, because of the confession of your, of your mouth, 
It is our privilege to baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you're buried with him in baptism. And raised to walk new in Christ. And the people said, Amen. All right. Trust the squad here. Don't get away. Ready? Where are we putting her? Where there's, hey, mic's off again. What happened here? All right. So where there's a will, there's a way, man. Listen, don't ever let something keep you from obeying the Lord. Can I say that one more time? Don't ever let something keep you from obeying the Lord. Because I promise you, there are some things in your life that the enemy wants to remind you of, how you're a failure, how you're no good, how you're this or that. And you will, if you allow him, he will give you an excuse to not obey him. Oh, which reminds me, if anyone's given your life to Christ but not yet been baptized and you know that you're not being obedient to the Lord, I want to give you the opportunity tonight. So is anybody that's given your life to Christ, not been baptized, and needs to be, and needs to do it tonight? Anybody? All right. I want to pray for us, and then I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have Pastor Gus come and tell you what's happening on Facebook. Friday, and then uh, I'll give one quick announcement, and we're at, then we'll leave here. So if you're out there, come back in just for a sec. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for just for the opportunity to be able to represent what is going to happen the day you return, and the fact that you're going to get us out of the grave and take us to heaven. Father, we cannot wait for that day. But Father, until that day comes, I pray that you find us faithful doing the things you've called us to do and being the people you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people said? Amen. Amen. Pastor Gus, come explain Friday, and then I'll, uh, I'll dismiss us. Everybody listen up. This is important. Good evening. So this Friday is Good Friday. Good Friday is, in many respects, the most important day in our faith. The most important day in our faith because that's the, the day that Christ paid the price for all our sin. So on Friday, we're going to have an opportunity for you to come to the church and we're going to have self-guided prayer. There's going to be a table. There will be five tables set up and you just come in the door, stop at the first table, read the passages for what happened at that time on Friday. Pray the prayer. Pray your own prayer. When you're done and you're ready, move to the next station. Five stations. The idea is it walks you through what Christ did for us on Good Friday. So between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m., church will be open. Stations will be ready. There will be prayer guides on the table. Take your time. Do it as fast or as slow as you want. I'll be here and others will be here if you need a time of special prayer, or you have something special that you'd like us to pray with you about. We'll be here to help you with that. But Friday from 7 to 2, Good Friday, chance to think about and walk through what Christ did for us. Thank you. Yeah, with that in mind, just know this, that maybe there's something going on in your life where you're like, man, I wish the elders would pray over me and anoint me with oil. There will be elders here from 7 till 2, um, and, and others on call. So, if you have something you need us to pray over for your life, is there a better day than Good Friday? The day the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. And so if you need healing, that's a great day to ask the Lord for healing on the day that we remember the fact that he died by his stripes. So uh, that's this Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pastor Gus will be here the whole time. Uh, other staff members will be in and out as needed. And uh, we hope that you'll come and be involved in that. Um, you got a flyer, or did y'all get a flyer coming in? No, you didn't. You will Sunday, though, and on Sunday, you're going to get a flyer that looks like this, and there's a few announcements. I just want to make sure you're aware of them. Um, one is a ladies' night of worship, uh, along with the ladies' retreat in, on, in June. The ladies' retreat in June, spots are filling up quickly. There's not many spots left. 
So if you want to be involved in the ladies' retreat, which is an amazing time for the ladies. They come back raving every year. So if that's something you want to do, it's June 27th through the 29th, and the spots are running out. So f- sign up today. The, co- the QR code's on here, and you can sign up. Uh, it's also out there in the, in the hall. Uh, the Book of Ruth for uh, Secret Church is happening uh, April 19th. It is $10 a person. That's so you can get a book. If you show up, nobody's going to send you home, even if you don't pay. So I'm just telling you that. So it's going to be a great time. And there's a family kite day on April the 13th. Now, with all that in mind, what's happening Saturday? It's our Easter egg. It's our resurrection day, right? So we're going to be doing an Easter egg hunt or a resurrection hunt. We're going to be telling the gospel of of what happened on Jesus, to Jesus in the tomb and the crucifixion and all that. We're going to be telling the story out here from 12 o'clock until 2.30, I think. Yeah, from 12 until 2.30. So come and be involved. It's going to be a great time. So I think Jimmy told me he's got 70 volunteers already. Can I just tell you, thank you for signing up. Now show up, okay? Don't just sign up and not show up. Yeah, you can still show up. So we're going to have a good time in that, and uh, thanks for all that. All right, anything else I've missed? Has it been good tonight? What? Oh, sunrise service, Sunday morning, 7 o'clock. We're going to do a sunrise service. Uh, and so if you'll be here at 7, then we'll eat uh, breakfast around 7.40. Why are you got your hands raised? Yeah, when you leave, just don't slip. Okay, go that way. Um, Saturday, 7 o'clock is our sunrise service. Uh, it will be a five-minute message. That's it. So it is not going to be what I'm going to preach on on Sunday morning, although some of it will be the same because, hello, it's about the resurrection. But um, come and, and be involved at 7 o'clock. We'll have breakfast after that. It's going to be great breakfast tacos. So uh, come and be involved. That We'll eat around 740. And, uh, and so 7 o'clock, we'll fellowship until about 720, 725. As the sun starts coming, we'll sing a couple songs. I'll give a five-minute message, and then we'll eat breakfast and then 9 o'clock service. Let me just say this one more time, or 9.30 service. Let me say this one more time, though. If you don't normally come to the 9.30 service, please don't switch services on Easter Sunday, okay? We are going to be packed in here. So whatever service you normally come to, you probably should come to that service again, because otherwise uh, we're not going to have space. So be praying for us. Thank you for coming tonight, uh, for being involved. Sunday morning, be prepared to, uh, to be a standing room only kind of people, right? Because we're not just a church, we're family, and there are going to be some guests here, and we need to make sure the guests feel welcome, and family gets up and says, hey man, have my seat, right? Be that kind of church, because I promise you there's enough of them other kind of churches. So if somebody sits them, please don't walk up to them and say, hey, you in my chair, because I'm going to take that chair and throw it away, okay? Please don't do that. All right, let me pray for us. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for all that we got to accomplish and see tonight. Father, just be reminded of your grace and your mercy. Father, I pray your blessing upon these people. I pray you bless them, that your face would shine upon you, be gracious to them, that you lift your countenance upon them, and Father, you give them peace in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight. We are picking up tables. We're leaving the chairs alone, right? I don't know what we're doing.